What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Detach Garage. Today we are talking about concrete prep. We've already done a lot of concrete work with the heated slab and this connector driveway and the covered patio and everything like that. But I failed to mention some key things that you might want to think about that as an inexperienced concrete person, I certainly didn't think about as we were prepping for the pour. So today we've got all the forms up. I'm going to show you some things that we did to make sure the pour goes smoothly and that the concrete will last for years to come. So let's flip the camera around and take a tour of the forms and where we're going to pour this coming week. All right, so let's get to the backyard and let's start back here with the forms for the patio. You guys have been a huge help in figuring out the size of this fire pit area. So what we did here is we put a stake in the ground and we went nine feet back all the way around. So this is, this is temporary. This is basically a pallet with some masonite on the side of it, some tape, and essentially what this is gonna do is create the circle inside and we can fill this with pea gravel and put the fire pit in this area. We wanted wood burning. Um, and so this is just gonna be, uh, once the concrete is poured, we'll essentially crush this thing, take the stakes out and uh, pull this out and we'll have a nice edge of concrete all around that we'll put pea gravel in. But you can see the chair here. Um, there is still room to you know walk around the fire pit on the inside and even once the chairs are up walk around on the back side we'll obviously get some better chairs than this but um if you are doing a fire pit area like this make sure you get enough space where um you're not having to walk on the grass if you have the room so some things that we did uh just to um make sure the concrete settles and shifts and does it doesn't crack um, so we've got our existing slab here that we poured for the covered patio. And what we did is we drilled holes and put some, uh, rebar in to connect the two together. So this is making sure that the slab moves, this new slab will move up and down with this slab over here. And you can see up against the wall here, we've got this synthetic felt that is in here that makes sure um, that this slab can move up and down. And so when you're connecting into other concrete and you want the concrete to rise and, and fall at the same level, you drill the holes and put the rebar in, and then where you want it to float, then you do the synthetic felt. So this is the same stuff. Um, we just put this up with spray adhesive, and um, this is also kind of setting our, our grade and our level. So make sure you do that correctly. But then this um, will make sure that it floats and this will make sure that it rises and falls with the same area here. So um, the biggest challenge and one thing you should certainly note is uh, siding and what you're gonna need to do for that. So um, we've got a pretty good rock base here, but then here it gets to more like topsoil and kind of, um, just more mud over here. And so since we have a um, construction driveway where the concrete trucks are gonna come in and then they're gonna swing around here, we've got our patio over here. So the reason this board is not put up across where we're gonna stop the concrete right here is because we're gonna have to buggy the concrete back here. So the concrete truck we were just worried about um, it sinking into this uh, topsoil and, and getting stuck so instead of getting a huge uh, bill for a tow truck to come pull it out we decided that it's going to be best to just spend a few hundred dollars rent a buggy so we can buggy the concrete back to this back corner back here so once we get the concrete filled back here, then we'll take this form and we'll put it in along here and uh, put, the, put the pins in and everything, reinforce it. And so the last few buggy loads, this will be in place here. So um, that is the back patio. The other thing you can see are these grade pins that these four grade pins that are set that we set the grade and we'll check those the day of the, the morning of the pour um, but that will help the guys as they are um, working the concrete to make sure 
uh, we get the proper grade and make sure the water, there's no puddles or anything here and all the water is going to flow this way. So those are some key things to keep an eye out. The other weird thing uh, that we didn't think about is um, space. So the bowl floats. Um, as they are working the concrete and as they have these long poles that they have to pull across the concrete to help smooth it out, you need space around it. So we had to actually move the swing set. It was over here. We actually moved it back there, back to the, the tree line so they'll have room to pull. We'll move this old swing set too, um, just to make sure there's enough room for the concrete guys to get their job done. So that's enough of the patio. Let's move around to the uh, driveway area and we're doing a similar thing here. So we're gonna do this in two pours. We're gonna do the patio area back here and this sidewalk area in one day. Then we are gonna do a second pour for the driveway area over here. So as we walk around, we've got the forms up over here for the driveway. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're not gonna to have to do a buggy um, on this side uh, driveway over here because with the, with the road, um, the concrete truck should be able to get down here make this turn and uh, drive all the way down to the end and put um, concrete all the way down at the end. Then uh, as we start getting close here, we'll form this up quickly and um, get this essentially shut off. Um, and then the concrete truck will just use the chute uh, to get back here. So we did the same thing. You can see the synthetic felt all the way around the edge here. Um, and then if we walk down towards the driveway, these are just some key things that you're gonna wanna think about is especially where the water runoff is going. So we did the same thing with uh, the pins where we drilled because we want it to float with this slab. And we did this with the old concrete as well, all the way down. But one thing we noticed is the uh, slope of the old concrete coming off of the house as well as the slope of the new concrete here we had a low spot and so we pulled a string from uh, this side over here where we've got our forms where we've got this set up to uh, keep sloping away and slope down that way to get water away from the house but we don't want a big puddle here and this was the lowest spot of all um, of all of the driveway here which makes sense because when none of this was around they wanted water coming away from the house and coming this way so what we've decided is we're going to have to actually saw cut this concrete out and then we're going to pour this section here we're going to re-pour it and the reason we're doing that is because if we didn't do that this would be a puddle and uh, in the winter that would just be more area for um you know, water to, to get through a crack in the concrete and heave it and whatnot. So um, we're actually gonna take these um, pins out and recut it kind of how these two by fours are laid out so that it still looks somewhat nice um, to come down and transition into the rest of the driveway here. Also, very, very excited for the basketball hoop area. So um, this is roughly three feet deep and um, you know a little bit wider than what's needed they say you need three feet by 24 inches by 24 inches it's a little bit wider than that but um you know using the uh the mini excavator to dig this out that is what we had and that's why it's a little bit of an oblong shaped hole so we'll have we've got our plate and so what we'll do is we'll get this poured about halfway full we'll put uh, this rebar in and stick it up and then this plate will actually go flat and level with the top of the concrete these j hooks will go in and then we'll be able to level the basketball hoop with these uh, pins up here so um, this <laughs> really exciting for me and my wife and uh, i'm sure the kids will play on this for hours so that is kind of an overview of the forms of our concrete um, the the two big things uh, that I really want to highlight on is number one, water flow and making sure your grade is set correctly. So this is our high point here. So this pin is up a little bit higher. So this is kind of your uh, continental divide essentially, where from this point, water's gonna go 
back that way or it's going to go this way to the front and everything is always pitching away from the house but then it's also going into the backyard or into the front yard and so the second point is making sure you do the uh, tie-ins correctly with the pins where you want it to move with the new slab and the floating where you want it to float against the house so a little bit of a different episode uh, today i hope you enjoyed it i wanted to get a little into more into the details of the concrete that we really didn't get to cover in the last section so if you have any questions please put those down in the comments below i'm really looking forward to getting both of these poured we've got the first uh, back patio going in on monday and then this section over here on the side of the garage for the driveway along the side as well as the basketball hoop and everything else like that will be poured on wednesday uh, if you again if you have any questions please put those down in the comments below uh, next episode we'll do the pouring itself and i'll try and get some more footage of that thank you so much for watching detached garage and i hope to catch you on the next episode